Hey everybody, in this video I am going to share three mistakes that you want to avoid making in your draw shoulder so that you can have a more comfortable, pain-free draw. The first mistake that you want to avoid is a lack of shoulder blade movement in your draw. Now what that means is you want to see this shoulder blade move as you're drawing. In simple terms, the shoulder blade should slide across your back and towards your spine. Now we're gonna get a little bit more detailed with that in a minute, but I just wanna focus purely on the necessity of that shoulder blade squeezing towards the spine. And the way that you can think of this is this shoulder blade should be like the horse that pulls the cart along with it. So let me show you what I mean. The mistake and what we do not want to see is no movement of that shoulder blade where it's just my arm and my shoulder moving. So arm and shoulder moves here, no shoulder blade movement. Here's the shoulder blade movement squeezing towards the spine. So again, mistake of just the arm and shoulder moving. Here's the fix of the shoulder blade squeezing towards the spine. Now that takes conscious effort and intention in getting that shoulder blade to pave the way so that the elbow, arm, and hand comes along with it in your draw, which encourages smooth joint mechanics, often making the joint more comfortable during, during the draw and avoiding any sort of pain or irritation that can come with improper mechanics when just the arm and elbow moves opposed to the shoulder blade paving the way. The second mistake builds directly off of that first mistake. So let's assume, hey, you've got that shoulder blade moving. It's paving the way for your pulling mechanic like we wanted to see in the mistake number one. Now what can happen in mistake number two is you get movement of that shoulder blade, but the mistake occurs when the shoulder bl blade rises up and that shoulder gets too high. And what occurs there is it's very easy for us to over-engage the upper trap. Now that upper trap is really strong and really good at pulling the shoulder up. So what happens is instead of keeping that shoulder blade low as it squeezes across the back, as you draw, that shoulder blade can rise up and it can shrug up towards the shoulder. Now when that occurs, that can put the joint into a vulnerable position and it doesn't allow the bigger, more appropriate muscles such as the rhomboids, the mid and lower trap, uh, the lat, to really pull that shoulder blade and engage a strong pulling mechanic. So the mistake you want to avoid as you draw is not allowing that shoulder to get real high like you see here, but instead that shoulder blade squeezes down low, stays lower. I like to think about putting this shoulder blade down in the opposite back pocket. That's a cue you can use to, yes, get that shoulder blade to squeeze across the back like we said in mistake number one, but also to keep it low so that it doesn't get too high into that shrugged up, vulnerable, weak, and unstable position. The third and final mistake that you want to avoid for a more comfortable pain-free draw is ensuring that the elbow and the arm does follow along with that shoulder blade. So the mistake occurs when I may engage that shoulder blade, but if I leave this elbow and this arm forward, not only does that make it hard to get that shoulder blade all the way back to a strong back engaged position, but it can also pull that shoulder blade and pull you out of what, the position that we want to see. So the mistake here is I may draw and that elbow, that arm gets left forward when in reality, we want to squeeze that elbow and arm back along with the shoulder blade. You can see where that starts to create a straight line through the bow and through the string. So if I can get that shoulder blade to squeeze down and back, like we said in the first two mistakes to avoid, and that arm and elbow can come along with it, now I'm in a strong alignment where that shoulder blade set back into the powerful back musculature and that elbow and arm is holding along in a nice solid joint position opposed to being left forward where often the bicep is the culprit in pulling that forward or I'm not fully engaged 
in beating those two first mistakes we talked about. Now that we've covered the mistakes, the goal is for you to be able to apply them. And these can be tricky. So I have a couple encouragements for you. And the first is to have patience. These things take time to develop the skill, the awareness, the control to get into the desired position that you're looking for. The next thing I would encourage is to practice with a band. Any band will work as long as you can work with a lighter tension in a simpler environment without your bow, without aiming, without a perfect anchor point, and just focus on executing those movements and feeling the control that you can have over your draw while you're being aware of what you're trying to achieve. And then the third thing that we often use for archers is using different drills in strength training that not only allow you to train this mechanic, but to get stronger with it. So that's where a lot of our uh, accessory training and accessory programs can be helpful too. And you can find those at archerystrong.com. I hope you found this video valuable. If you did, it's very helpful if you subscribe to the channel or like the video. I appreciate your support as always.